Bonjour Bonjour les amis Welcome to France, bienvenue en France Bienvenue, welcome to the Loire Valley Thank you for joining me today for another virtual tour with France with Vero. I am taking you today to a magical place and I hope you enjoy our visit. We are in a garden, a garden created in the 16th century. And today I'm going to tell you the story of a forgotten chateau, a forgotten gardener, a king's dream, and another dream more recent that enables us today to come and visit this magical place. Bonjour à tous. Welcome. Thank you for joining me. We are in Amboise, my friends, the lovely city of Amboise which I know a lot of you know and have visited. Of course, it's still winter, it's February. The garden is asleep. This garden was an orchard. You can see some pear trees, uh, sorry, pear trees and apple trees as well. I like how they protect the ground or decorate it as well with shards. Slate, as you know, is a popular material, building material around here. You see it on all the rooftops. There's shale as well and other rocks. It's been a lovely day, a little cold but sunny. We'll take it. On the left hand side here are old greenhouses. They were originally built in the 16th century. Of course, glass is not original, but they still winterize. They still enable them to winterize some of the most fragile plants they have here. I'm going to take you to another section of this garden and tell you the story of this magical place. This is Chateau Gaillard, friends. Now, Gaillard is a pretty common name in France. You know, you probably know other places named Gaillard in France, but this is Chateau Gaillard in Amboise. A place, I have to say, many people bypass. They come to Amboise and visit, of course, the famous Chateau d'Amboise that towers over the city. They go to Leonardo da Vinci's home at the Clos Lucet. And very few or few people actually keep going. About five minutes past the Clos Lucet is this beautiful place, Chateau Gaillard. And you know, I like to keep things off the beaten path, whether I'm in Paris or in the rest of France. So today I'm taking you to Chateau Gaillard. I hope the cell signal is going to hold up for me and for us. Nothing much I can do about it, but we should be fine. We left this uh, garden with its very well organized beds, its orchard, its greenhouses, and we are going to go through a gate, the Dolphin's Gate. This gate, friends, was built in the 1500s at the very start of a period we know as the Renaissance. Now, on the side here, you can see reminders of the fact that there was a wall around the section of the garden we're going to see. A wall that went all around it. And today they have recreated the wall with some uh, laurels. But originally you would have had a wall here. We are about to enter the King's Garden at the Dolphin's Gate. Dolphin's Gate because you can still see a dolphin. Thank you for joining me today. We are in Amboise at a chateau that's a little bit off the beaten path known as the Chateau Gaillard. And I think you're going to enjoy this story and this visit. They close in a little less than an hour, so I can't be too long. <laughs> the king who commissioned this beautiful work in the gardens 
was named Charles VIII. And once this part of the garden was completed, and we will see who completed it in a minute, the king said, this is just like heaven. All we're missing is Adam and Eve. Well, this turns out to be Eve right here. Look how exquisite this is. I've been here for a couple of hours and I've only seen about 10, 15 people here. There were plenty of people lining up at the chateau next to us, the Clos Lucé. And I hope some of them actually made it here. The king I want to tell you about is Charles VIII. He ruled France at the very end of the 15th century and embarked on what was going to be known as the Italian Wars. Charles VIII was not handsome, but he believed he had claims on the Kingdom of Naples. That was a big chunk of what we call Italy today. And so he took his army, went to Italy, and whether it was a military success or not, history is divided on that. Something happened there. Something happened there. Those uh, soldiers, those French soldiers, who were a little rough around the edges, discovered a way of life, elegant way of life. They discovered art. Art the Italians already had, paintings, sculptures, beautiful buildings from the antiquity. And they were incredibly, they were amazed. And so like all people who fight wars do, Charles VIII eventually brought back a lot of treasures with him. But in his uh, bags, there was also, there were also about 20, 23 uh, artisans painters, sculptors, artists, all sorts of trades. And he brought them with him, one of them in particular. His name was Don Pacello di Mercogliano. And if you don't mind, I will call him Don Pacello. He was the most famous gardener of his time and had worked in Naples on several palaces for the king of Naples, who happened to be Spanish at the time. So Charles VIII brought him back with him here and asked him to work on the gardens here at Chateau Gaillard. Now Chateau Gaillard, a long time ago before that, had been a medieval fortress protecting the southern entrance to Amboise and was a fortified castle. And down the road through the 15th century, it was in the, hand, in the hands of a gentleman known as Gaillard, Le Seigneur Gaillard, Lord Gaillard, who worked for the king, was in fact in charge of the kingdom's finances. And if you know a little bit about French history, you know that it's never a good idea to be in charge of a French king's finances. It doesn't usually end well. So Gaillard was charged for, with not, they said, you didn't pay your taxes. And Charles VIII took the chateau. Notice I still haven't, you, haven't shown you the chateau on purpose. I'm showing you the grounds for now. And uh, when he came back from Italy with all these artisans and especially Don Pacello, he decided to create here a peaceful haven, a place where he and his wife, Anne of Brittany, we have talked about her before, his young wife, could come here and find some peace because the court was at the powerful, the big Chateau d'Amboise, which is right next door. So they could come here and rest and find peace. And so here, in Amboise, in the Loire Valley, a famous Italian gardener, Don Pacello, created a magical garden. And he was such an innovator that it is said that he is the first one. He brought the, the Renaissance here, here in the King's Gardens in particular, with these very orderly beds, as you can see this fountain of youth in the center and the elegant Chateau Gaillard. So let's look at this a little bit. Do you see this high wall 
right behind the chateau. The chateau is actually not resting on the wall, but we are in the center of a small valley, and this is a half circle shape right here. And so the chateau and the grounds are protected from northerly winds by this. And then if you look this way, the chateau has a southern exposure, as does the garden. There is a river that you see in front of us, an ancient spring. So imagine for Don Pacello, the gardener, what great work he could do here. He had light, protection from the elements and the winds. He had water. It was like a, a canvas, a blank canvas that he could work on. And so he designed the king's gardens right here in this section. And remember what I said, it was surrounded by a wall that's gone today. And so here, King Charles VIII and those who came after him, Louis XII, his cousin, and of course, Francis I, enjoyed this chateau. In front of us is the Orangerie. Now, it didn't look like that in the 16th century. They didn't have those uh, glass walls, for example. It was more of a porch. But one thing that Don Pacello did that nobody had done in France yet was to bring exotic plants and trees. And he brought orange trees. The French had not seen orange trees yet. He brought about 40 of them and he designed this place. They call them lemonayas at the time. They didn't call them orangerie yet. And that's where they could be winterized, protected in the winter. I'm standing in front of the Fountain of Youth that was part of the gardens that they would design in Italy, in the Kingdom of Naples in particular. Very romantic atmosphere, serene. And so to this orangerie that you see in front of us was actually the first orangerie in France. So today you can marvel at the beautiful one in Versailles or in many other places and chateaux you've been to in France. The Luxembourg Gardens have, have a beautiful orangerie. It became a status symbol to have an orangerie, but remember this was the first one that came to France right here at Chateau Gaillard, for those of you asking for the name, G-A-I-L-L-A-R-D. We are in Amboise, right, right outside the city center five minutes away from Leonardo da Vinci's home at the Clos Lucé. And yet many people don't make it here. In fact, I looked up a couple of guidebooks and was surprised to see they did not mention Chateau Gaillard. We will see why in a minute. So picture the kings of France in the Renaissance, Charles VIII, the one I showed you earlier, his successor Louis XII, who married Anne of Brittany. Remember, she uh, married two kings of France. We talked about her when we went to Langer. And after them, Francis I all used the chateau. Later down the road in the 16th century, a young French king, king named, named Francis II uh, spent his honeymoon here. Yes, a hidden treasure. I saw the comment, a hidden treasure, and it is exactly right. And I will tell you why in a second. It is a hidden treasure. So let's look at the facade for now. A lot of people think when the Renaissance happened, it was the end of the Middle Ages abruptly and everything changed, including facades abruptly. Well, that's not exactly what happened. When the Renaissance arrived in the Loire Valley and it started here at Chateau Gaillard, the French really incorporated elements of the Gothic architecture with elements of the Renaissance. And you totally see that on this facade. We also went to Azé le Rideau and talked about that. But you could see how intricately decorated it is and how it shines in the sun because it's made of that white tufo stone, the, the rare version of the tufo, the best one, uh, the toughest stone, which is extremely easy to carve um, because it's softer. And this is what this facade is made of. And right below it, there's a terrace and right below that is the orangerie. So everything is done so it really draws your eyes up to the chateau, you see. And when Don Pacello designed the King's Gardens where I'm standing right now, he had a long line of orange trees. He designed a perspective with the orange trees. And the king could be up there and enjoy the view. 
on the grounds. So the grounds are about what, 15 uh, hectares, so that's about a little less than 40 acres. You have forests, of course, pretty large. Now, one detail that's interesting. Remember that sometimes if the signal cuts off, if you change devices, it helps. And it tends to work better on the phone than on an iPad, from what I've heard. <laughs> Just a tip for you. Look at this big rock behind the chateau. It almost looks like the chateau is leaning against it, but it isn't. This big rock has been here for a really long time. And in the middle, in medieval times, when Chateau Gaillard was a medieval fortress, you've got to imagine a super high wall with towers all around the property, all around here, because we were here to protect the entrance to Amboise. If you visit the chateau, you can visit when you visit a chateau, you can visit the first level, beautiful rooms. Uh, we will talk about the furniture and what's in there. And then the two, top two floors are for the family who owns the chateau. But in the back of the chateau, you can still see what's left of the Middle Ages, the original fortress. There is an incredible tower with a spiral staircase you can climb. So you can feel and maybe reminisce what it was like to live here in the Middle Ages. Look at the sun. This is perfect. Just beautiful. I like surprises. I like discoveries. I like to step off the beaten path, and I know some of you do too, and this is one way of doing that in Amboise. That is a lovely town, but a very touristy town where people tend to do or go to the same places. And I urge you to uh, check out Chateau Gaillard. Now, one of the reasons this chateau is not that well known and sometimes not mentioned at all in some guidebooks is because for many years it wasn't open. In fact, it opened in 2016, I believe, after an extensive renovation. So this is the story. The chateau changed hands after the kings owned it. And the last of those three kings I mentioned was so impressed with the work that Don Pacello had done to the gardens. Don Pacello was a very old man by then, in his late 80s, which is incredible for the 16th century. And he gave the chateau to Don Pacello in return, he said, for an annual bouquet or arrangement of orange flower blossoms. And Don Pacello owned the chateau after that. And then the chateau changed hands. It stayed with um, uh, the nobility for a while through the centuries. And then some local affluent people owned it. And then something really interesting happens. The chateau seems to disappear. After World War II, the chateau has gone. And so what you see today as an orderly park, beautifully arranged landscape park, imagine it completely, everything is outgrown, you know. You have trees like where I'm standing right now. Those beds are not here. They've been covered by years, by decades, by several centuries of just nature going wild. And people in Amboise, this chateau is right in, t in, in the heart of town. People in Amboise forget there was once a chateau called Chateau Gaillard here. I heard that even on maps you couldn't find it. If you looked at old maps of Amboise, all you saw was a, a kind of a spot on the map with no name and nobody remembered there was a chateau there named Gaillard. And then the story becomes very interesting. In 2011, a powerful and successful French businessman named Marc Lelandais, Monsieur Lelandais, very successful French businessman, specializing in the luxury industry, but also someone very interested in history who had lived in Italy. Monsieur Lelandais is approached by a real estate person who says, I know you like this, uh, the Renaissance, and I have something for you. There's a listing in Amboise. We have a chateau there that's been forgotten for many years. How would you like to take a look at it? Monsieur Lelandais was probably thinking about retiring from business at that point, and he came here to check it out. And what's really cool is when you visit the, in the interior of the chateau, the f in the former chapel, you can see a photo exhibit detailing what the place looked like when he first saw it. You would not believe where I'm standing right now was a jungle. And this beautiful structure in front of us was like the Sleeping Beauty. You could hardly see the top of it. 
So Monsieur Le Landais was not discouraged and invested five years, considerable resources to restore first the grounds, pulling out trees, clearing the grounds, and basically rediscovering what the gardener, the king's gardener, Don Pacello, in the 16th century had created here. And then he tackled the chateau. The orangery, for example, what you see here today, windows, which was at the time in the 16th century a porch, in 1940, for some unknown reason, had been completely covered with concrete. So this was a wall of concrete. They have to dig it out by hand to remove the concrete, to restore the structure that Don Pacello had created. And then they added the windows, of course, because today we have access to lots of windows and glass. So that helped. And you can follow the story of the incredible restoration in the chapel with a photo exhibit, like I mentioned. Now, if you come here, don't believe it's just a chateau. The chateau is very interesting, but you also have pathways, themed pathways. In fact, you can climb all the way up there above the chateau. Imagine the view of the grounds. You can find the old spring that dates back to Gaulish time. You can uh, follow another pathway. In the back over there, there are two donkeys. You can probably spot them in the distance. We have two donkeys who are quite friendly. There are also other animals and wild animals in the forests. So there's a lot to do. The entrance fee is 14 euros for one person, um, but you can easily spend two or three hours here. And remember, we're five minutes away walking distance from the place everybody goes to, who is Leonardo da Vinci's Le Clos Lucé. Now, the inside, the interior of the chateau is what I really enjoyed. I love the grounds, but the interior, you know how in the Loire Valley very often a lot of the chateaus are almost empty. Um, there's no furniture left. And in fact, since the kings of France during the Renaissance traveled so much, a lot of the, they traveled with their furniture. So a lot of the chateaus were almost empty half the time. But when you visit them today, it's kind of nice to be able to imagine how people lived. And so what Marc Lelandais has done is to collect, to find, and I'm sure that took forever, the type of furniture that would have been here in the 16th century. The decor inside is exquisite. There is furniture from the Renaissance, from the Gothic period as well, um, artifacts, uh, everything is just, uh, the taste is just incredible. And you can really picture what it was like to live here in the 16th century. And when you look outside at this garden where we're standing now, you really feel like you are in Italy, in a palazzotto, you know, they call them those palaces, the type of palazzotto where Don Pacello would have built this type of garden and what a treat it must have been for the French kings who had never known anything like it to have this here in the heart of the Loire Valley. I thought you might enjoy this story. I know I did. Now I cannot take you inside the orangery because the signal's too low, but I'm going to try one last thing before I say goodbye, which is to go up these stairs so you can see the grounds from the top of this terrace and this will get you closer to the facade so we can take a closer look at some details how about that i know there are a lot of spammers on tonight and it happens just don't click on the links they provide you're already watching the live feed you don't need to click on anything look at the mediterranean feel here the tall, skinny cypress trees. You have those uh, palm trees as well. There's lavender over there. And imagine in the summer when they take out, now Don Pacello came here with about 40 orange trees, but now there's probably two or 300 here and they take them out and lay them out here in the summer. So if you come back here in season, you'll get to see this. All right, time for a workout. One thing I haven't mentioned is the big rock that we saw also hides some interesting structures. You can kind of see them up here. 
You know, the Loire Valley is famous for its troglodyte houses or dwellings where people have really lived since the prehistoric times, including in the Middle Ages. And Chateau Gaillard has a kitchen that is a troglodyte kitchen. There's also an old, what they call the boulangerie, where they used to make bread. And you can see it here. So you're not coming here just to see a chateau. It's a beautiful chateau or grounds, but you're also coming here to see what it must have felt like to live in a troglodyte home. Okay, we are on the terrace, right by the chateau, Chateau Gaillard, Charles VIII's dream. Look at the height of the rooftops made of slate. The wind is picking up. Look at the details here. Imagine the restoration it took to bring this up to the level where it was in the 16th century. And look at the grounds. Full southern exposure. So we are really in a valley and that's why it's sheltered. Down below is the garden, Don Pacello's masterpiece. Now, just so you know, he is credited with really initiating what is known today as French style gardens, the ones you see in Versailles. Of course, the geometric shapes he used were a little bit uh, not quite as sophisticated as what you would see down the road, but it was the same idea. And this gentleman was in his 50s when he came here and followed the king. And he spent the remaining 37 years of his life working for Charles VIII and then two more kings after him until he died at 87. He was the forgotten gardener. And this was the forgotten chateau, the sleeping beauty that Amboise and the rest of France forgot about for many, many decades after World War II. And that is now back to life, thanks to another man's dream. I sat here for about 30 minutes. <laughs> Now, a lot of the trees were here originally. A lot of them have been added. A lot of them have been taken out because they had grown right here in the central part of the garden. Um, there is a beautiful alleyway made of plane trees at uh, Chateau Gaillard in one of the entrances. Imagine sitting here. They do have um, an eatery on site, more of a restaurant or a cafe or something, but it's closed right now, it's winter. But imagine sitting here. They also have lounge chairs where you can relax in that direction where the fields and the donkeys are. Let's take a closer look at this beautiful white tufo facade. So you do have elements of the Gothic, but you have all of the curves and details that they loved to add in the Renaissance. And look how intricately this is sculpted up there. I hope my camera won't flip around. There we go. Look at that. Look at the detail on the facade. Isn't this beautiful? And so elegant. The tufo just gives it this elegant appearance, doesn't it? And if I stand on the side here, hopefully with a signal still, I can show you the big walk that's been here for centuries, for centuries and centuries, that protects Chateau Gaillard from the wind. And behind that wall, you have to imagine the old medieval walls and towers that protected the old fortress before it became this elegant place. Now, one of the things Monsieur Le Landé did inside, can you imagine how many artisans, skilled artisans it took to repair all the woodwork, everything. The stained glass is one of my favorite things that I saw in there. Uh, they replaced literally the stained glass on all the windows in the chateau. And a lot of the, wind, uh, 
a lot of the stained glass has some medallions. They have medallions in the center. And you can kind of see it from outside, but I'll share some photos later. You see the medallions in the middle here? And those medallions depict scenes that are, they draw their inspiration from illuminated manuscripts, famous illuminated manuscripts from the Middle Ages. So you can see all that when you go inside. And remember, there are lots of pathways you can follow on flat ground or up, up there. So, next time you come to Amboise, friends, go see the big Chateau d'Amboise where the kings ruled, the royal chateau. Go see Leonardo da Vinci's home at the Clos Lucet, certainly worth a visit as well. But don't forget Chateau Gaillard. And if you come here with a Clos Lucet ticket, you get a discount on the entrance fee. So that's something worth keeping in mind as well. You can see the sun is setting over there. It's going to be time to go home for me. Let's say a quick hello as I always do. Voila. Bonjour les amis. Thank you for joining me again today for another virtual tour. Um, uh, as you know, those tours are tip supported and um, your donations are gratefully accepted in my virtual tip jar on PayPal. That information will be in the video notes. The best way to support my business is to join the Friends with Vero Club to become a patron for just a ridiculous amount each month. You will get access to a lot of extra content and live events. And I'm about to hit the road again. I'm a tour guide and I'm about to start traveling again a lot this year. And if you join the club, I promise you, you will get to see some pretty incredible places in France. So thank you for your support. I will flip around to show you one last time the magnificent grounds of Chateau Gaillard, the King's Garden created by Don Pacello. A magical place and I'm sure that when you come back in the spring summer or fall that section we saw over there over there with the greenhouses and the orchard the herb garden will be absolutely magnificent and you will enjoy it thank you for joining me today in the Loire Valley I will be seeing you again very soon in fact I'm heading to Paris at the end of next week so next time I see you, we will be à Paris. À bientôt, friends. Bon weekend.